They were the first uh, police officers in the United States that were ever assassinated. The slogan of that time was, a pig is a pig because that's what they called police officers. It was the uniform. It didn't matter if they were white or if they were black. Diane Piagentini's husband Joe and his partner Waverly Jones were executed in Harlem on May 21st, 1971. This is where he was killed. He was in the bushes over here. Both ambushed from behind, Jones died instantly with a shot to the skull. This is Waverly Jones's funeral. This is his mom, his children. Joe Piangentini, married just five years, and a 27-year-old dad of two daughters had begged for mercy. They emptied their gun into him, and then they took his revolver out and shot him as he was pleading for his life. They found 22 bullet holes in him. It was the Black Liberation Army. The killer is part of a movement that would kill 10 cops nationwide. Piagentini's gun kept as a trophy until it was dug up on a Mississippi farm three years later. 14 years later, a rookie officer named Edward Byrne would also be assassinated on a Queen Street corner on orders from a jailed drug enforcer, angry he was back in prison. We lose one, they lose one. Well, let's, let's, let's send a message to them. Send a message out. In both cases, the killers got 25 years to life, a possible chance at freedom before state laws were changed to allow life without parole for cop killers. I seen the first bullet that hit him killed him. And as Todd Scott that. and three other convicted officer burn killers get set for their very first appearance before the parole board, Diane Piagentini can give the Byrne family a sense of what it's like to prepare a victim impact statement every two years, something she's been doing since the year 2000. It's like you have a wound and it has a scab on it, and every two years you're picking at that scab, and it hurts. The brains behind the Piagentini Jones execution was Albert Washington, and he died in prison. But Herman Bell and Anthony Bottom remained there, using Muslim names now. Bottom even married with grandchildren. The police union for New York City cops, the PBA, has a new link on its website called Keep Cop Killers in Jail. It lists the names of all state inmates who are currently doing time for the murder of 27 on-duty officers since 1968 and 17 off-duty cops who took action when they saw crimes in progress and paid with their lives. And cop killers have gotten out. Killers like Shuaib Abdullah Rahim, who did 37 years for shooting police officer Stephen Gilroy in 1973 with a 30 caliber rifle slug to the skull during a robbery hostage standoff in Brooklyn. When I went over to him, I knew he was dead then, yeah, from where he took the bullet. He took the bullet in the back of his head. Gilroy's widow was outraged when Rahim was released on July 4th weekend, 2010. Doesn't seem that a few years of good behavior and getting a master's degree takes all that away. Diane Piagentini read to us the closing of her most recent victim impact statement delivered to the parole board in January 2012. So today when the call ends, the Band-Aid goes back on. And in two years, when they come up for parole, it'll be ripped off again. And no matter how long it takes, I will come to you and ask that you deny parole for Herman Bell and Anthony Bottom. I'll always be there. And if I'm not there, my children will be there or a cousin will be there. But somebody is going to be there. I'm Mary Murphy, PIX11 News.